I love when you say canooter valve. Canooter valve, that gets you. Canooter valve. <laughs> I know there's gun ASMR, but is I, there any female gun ASMR? Oh, I bet. There's gotta be somebody out there making money on Charging that. Charging handle. <laughs> you got me, I'm ready. <laughs> What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today I've got something pretty special for you, at least to me. I've got a creation of my own design. This is my 300 Blackout from sort of Bravo Company, which we'll get into here in a little bit. However, this is a project that I've been getting into for quite a while for a very specific purpose. First off, I wanted something for home defense, and not just for home defense, but I wanted something particularly for ranch defense. I live in rural Iowa, and in rural Iowa, there isn't a lot of people to help you with things, so you kind of have to do stuff yourself. <laughs> and especially if you live way out in the middle of nowhere like I do, where we're about 10 miles from the nearest town. A while back, we had a lot of issue with critters, and I've been shooting them with nine millimeters. Uh, however, I have not been getting quite the effect on the bigger critters that I would like, so I decided I wanted something bigger, but I also wanted it hearing safe, just like my nine. I wanted to make sure I could easily use subsonic ammunition uh, with a suppressor. So, I went with 300 Blackout because it's the obvious choice. Not only is it the obvious choice, but a company that I really like, Bravo Company, not sponsored or sent anything from them or anything, I just really like them, also makes a very reliable, durable 300 Blackout that I just happen to have. So I put this on my SBR lower, painted it all up, and put up a lot of accessories on it that will help me with not only critter defense, but actual home defense as well, because 300 Blackout Supersonic is incredibly effective, especially in close quarters, while still maintaining a pretty decent and shootable overall platform. So what I wanted to do was make a light, mobile, but very accurate and pretty powerful firearm, and I think that I've achieved that. Uh, we've used a 300 Blackout upper, so it's got a, the BCM 300 Blackout upper and barrel. It's got an adjustable gas system with a V7's rail. It has a Surefire uh, Mini with an Omega 9K, an Aimpoint, Magpul, uh, B5 system stock and a 2A armament Baleos lower. The reason why it's a 2A armament lower is because it is my SBR lower. So one of my two, I should say. Uh, and both of them are 2A armament because I love them. Now, before we get into the video further, I do want to mention that you guys should, if you like the video, just go down there and subscribe and make sure to hit the notification button. A lot of people are telling me they're not subscribed anymore. A lot of people are telling me they're not getting the videos. Make sure you go down and hit that bell and uh, subscribe. I think what I've done with this rifle is create something that is going to fit the niche that I'm looking for, but also fit a niche that I think a lot of people are looking for when it comes to a home defense gun. The ideal home defense gun is a gun that's something that works really well, that's intuitive for everyone to use in the house, that has low enough recoil for everyone to use, but also be powerful enough and effective enough to actually stop intruders and things like that. I also like this gun for farm use because it is big enough to use anything all the way up to deer if you so choose, uh, which is actually pretty cool in and of itself. So. I think what I've created is kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to defensive firearms, personally, but we are gonna have to go down and shoot it. I'm gonna add a couple of things eventually, including probably a, at least a BCM, uh, or at least a Daniel Defense front sight on there in case the optic ever does go down, although I do have an Aimpoint T2, so that is extremely unlikely, and as long as you change the batteries every year, these things pretty much last forever. I do have it on a taller Scalar Works mount as well because I do enjoy the heads up shooting a lot more lately because I get the big fucking head. But uh, we also have a Geisley trigger in here and a Radian Ambi safety in here. My buddy Nick uh, Puvia was talking to me about it the other day because these can also run 45, but I run the 90. It's just because I got big ass hands and I like consistency with all my guns. So even though these couple of these could run 45, I prefer to run 90 and everything just to make sure. And finally, we have the gas buster charging handle because I feel like that gives me the least amount of gas to my face and I like that a lot. Now, before we go down and shoot this gun, I do want to mention my patient support. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you I can pick up guns and stuff like this and ammunition to feed it. Appreciate the Patreon supporters. If you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Go down to the link in the description. Also in that description is a link to a local homeless shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So please get down there, click that link, and donate to those kids. Now, I'm going to take my, uh, my BCM here with my War Poet Sling, and we're going to go down and sight it in and shoot a few rounds, and I'll give you my first impressions of what I think of this gun, and then if you want to see more of it, just let me know in the comments.
Where's that hitting that target? See any bullet splashes on that target? I at don't. All? Huh. Okay. Would you like me to get my handy dandy spotting scope? Well, it's off that, so. Let me see this one more time. I see it hitting left. I didn't. Oh, it's way right, babe. It's like two feet right. I thought I saw it left. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Two feet right, so it's gotta go left. Apparently I cannot. Yeah, look you're not a good spotter. <laughs> I cannot film and spot at the same time. That's okay. Why was that one so much more recoil than the other ones? Shitty ammo. I don't know. Oh. Fucking V-Max underneath. What? The super expensive Hornady V-Max underneath. Oh. <laughs> that's my that's my supersonic shit. I was like, why in the fuck is that? I must have like layered it in there for some reason. Like here, have four or five rounds of cheap ammo and then fucking, I was like, what in the hell? So you can be surprised. I guess. can't tell where that's going. We're gonna try to shoot at that bottom. Bingo, bitches! I think we're pretty good, but let me take a last look. There's a lot going on with this gun and very little rail space. So it's actually kind of interesting how I've had to change things on the front of the gun back and forth a few times to try to get exactly where I want it to fit. It's not perfect, but there's so much stuff up there that obviously works. I mean, I love a vert grip on an SBR just because if you have a shorter gun, it's easier. It's an easier angle, in my opinion, on my wrist to go like that than it is to go like this. So it can bring my hand back a little further. And then the mini scout's like one of the best you can get. Uh, so far, the suppressor is not heating up, but we're not shooting at any crazy volume, uh, partly because 300 blackout's expensive, and I just don't have a lot of it. I've got actually a lot of the Hornady defensive ammo, but I don't really want to shoot that. I've got a little bit of uh, Seller and Bellet uh, target, which we were shooting, and now I'm going to be shooting the Freedom Munitions, and uh, I have a bug on me. But uh, I'm not confident in the Freedom Munitions, so hopefully it doesn't malfunction. Hmm. Backs out a little bit much. Put it out for prone. Okay. All right, so now we got about 10 rounds in this mag, and sadly that's about all we have left because I don't want to shoot a lot of my expensive stuff. But we'll shoot here at 75 offhand a little bit uh, since it's so beautiful, and I might take some offhand shots with this anyway, so. Is that, how quiet is that? Super quiet, super quiet. Dead right in the middle of that 10 inch plate. Do you see that down there? It's got uh, accuracy on this little 10 inch barrel is really impressive. Let's go for, uh, let's go for one of the plates on the plate rack. I 
I mean, I'll take that all day long, especially for a little critter dispense or a dispatcher. The recoil is super easy on these too, especially on the subsonics. All right, so now with the last two, we'll take her out to 100 yards here. It's about as far as I'll ever shoot this gun, especially offhand, so. Boy, I missed the last one, that sucks. That's bad luck. I was going for that hostage plate, but either way. So I love the gun so far. Super lightweight, super mobile, super easy to hold up for long periods of time, which could definitely be important in a home defense situation and stupid accurate too. My pretty little housewife with my badass BCM. Uh, you're gonna shoot that first and it's mm -hmm. set up for you, right? Yep. So uh, I shot all the nice, easy subsonics. You got a couple in there, yep. but some of the, a lot of that supersonic because that's all we have left. Yep. And I wanted you to try it because, you know, I have to shoot this every yeah. once in a while, potentially. Yeah, it's true. To protect so, myself. Yeah, in case of rabid raccoons and such, remember? Yep. <laughs> All right, so just go nuts, go whenever. Okay. Safety. Yep. All right, let me know what you think and we'll shoot it again. It's getting steamy up in here. Yeah? Steaming in my face a little bit because I shoot rifles left-handed, which everybody comments about. I am left-eye dominant, so I shoot rifles left-handed. Uh, I love this thing. Yeah? You built it with me in mind. I did. Because we are two vastly different sized people. Which is why collapsible <laughs> stocks are so important. Exactly, exactly. But everything else feels really good. Obviously, the recoil is sus. Well, yeah, but, but that round will blow a damn yep. ballistic gel block right off the freaking table. That yeah. that uh, Hornady uh, black uh, 300 blackout is really impressive stuff. Yeah. All right, give ready? it all. Yeah. yeah I don't know how many I have left. I wasn't keeping track, but. Man, you look cute. You ready? Oh yeah. Knock the target over, huh? I did. I told you that thing hits. Oh, whoops. Oh, you knocked my whole steel, my big old steel target whoops. over. That's funny. I what? just painted that one too, dang it. All right. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yep. Aren't you a little badass? With a bruise on my shoulder now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a few like that. And I'll move up closer. You ready? That'd be it. Do you want me to keep going? No. You're good. Good? I'm out. All right, so first impressions of my BCM 300 are that it's awesome. I knew it was awesome. I built it. But uh, <laughs> uh, what do I like about it? I like all the things. Uh, it's got a low mass carrier in it from Cryptek Coating, and it's got a JP uh, buffer tube system in it and an adjustable gas block. Uh, very similar setup to a couple of my other guns that you've seen recently, and the reason for that is, is because it works. Not only does it allow you to adjust it per your ammunition type, but it also decreases the recoil to what you want it to be. And I know a lot of people say that, well, adjustable gas blocks, you'll decrease it, the gas to where the gun doesn't work anymore. Well, only if you want to. I mean, you are the one turning the wrench. So what I like to do personally when I adjust a gas block is I like to put a one round in a magazine in, fire it, get it to where it locks back, and then I turn it up two to three spots above that just to make sure that it works when it's dirty in adverse conditions. And because of that, we were able to shoot well over 100 rounds today suppressed with absolutely no issues, and I did not lube the gun or anything like that. So 
So far, it's been very reliable for me. I'm gonna continue to test it, obviously, considering that this is gonna be an important gun in my collection, and we're gonna see a lot more videos of this. We're gonna do some training videos of this and things like that, especially with the misses, because this gun is sort of built for her. What do you think? I mean, you shot it as much as I did. I felt very capable with it. I obviously was involved in the building of it and the deciding factors on like the furniture and whatnot. So I felt very comfortable with it. I feel like I was 99% accurate with it. There was a couple of misses, but not too bad. I like the taller mount. Yeah. So I don't have to lean my face over quite as much. That was the first time you've used that, right? The I think 197. So. Yeah. I think so. I really enjoyed it. Uh the red dot was pretty great. I liked the hand guard. The, my little chopped BCM yeah. angle grip there. Yep, yep, I like that. Um Whenever, I mean, the only problem I have with shooting rifles, because I shoot left-handed, is it always ejects funny, so I have to, like, crank my arm in a specific way so it doesn't go down my, my titties. Yeah, but, well, uh, you know. Tits-related issues are common with firearms. Burnt tits are a problem for me. However, I like everything else. A little bruise on your shoulder, too, from the, uh, yeah. uh, from the uh, Hornady. Yeah, this yeah. Guy, subsonic seller and bellet is so low and so nice and easy to shoot and so quiet and lovely. But if you want to pack a punch, you can do that as well with 300 blackout, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, this is set up for halfway between the two. I actually set it up on uh, Freedom Munitions 150 grain because that's what I have the most of in my ammo's trash. Uh, seller and bellet's my favorite uh, plinking ammo, and then the the Hornady is going to be my favorite overall defensive ammunition. I saw. Oh man, I can't remember. I saw a ballistic gel test a long time ago on that. I'm like, wow, I gotta try that. And uh, I, hopefully this winter we'll see some real world effect on some hogs with this bad boy, but we'll have to see. Uh, the suppressor was nice, right? Nice and light mm -hmm. and makes it so if you actually have to do hit the old bang switch inside a house, you don't lose your hearing forever mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. me. <laughs> uh, B5 stock was good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, everything worked. Everything worked except uh, slings are never going to work for both of us. So that's true. It, that's it just something that I train around. Right, but that's because when the the sling is, when, when the gun's actually stored where it's going to be stored, it's actually stored with, with the, the sling, sling stuck in the yeah. Ranger band. So you just stick this bad boy in there like that and fold it over a bunch. I don't know how It'd to do great. it because I wasn't a freaking you ranger. But the point is, is that okay, there uh, we go. it holds there. Look at that shit show. I usually do it better than that. You're not a fast man. Yeah, well, advantages and disadvantages I mean, of that. <laughs> the sling is the only thing that we cannot get to be perfect for both of us, but nine times out of ten you're gonna be the one defending our home uh I'm... that seems likely considering that's how it's been in the past uh however it's nice to have backup defense I, is I an equal opportunity uh, i'd be situation. happy to be uh, your backup but so that's how it's usually with sitting. a different sling a little bit better than that <laughs> right right the warrior poet sling is an interesting concept in and of itself because it's uh it's not like my vicar slings and uh, some of my other slings, T-Rex arm slings and stuff where you have an adjustment, it really is kind of set it, leave it, and then use the bungee system. And that might work for John, but I'm not the biggest fan of that after. I've had it on like five rifles now for thousand round reviews, so I've had a little experience with it. I prefer the Vickers sling, me personally, but I think that's just personal preference. Uh, it certainly works though, and I'm gonna leave it on there because I own the damn thing, and it works just fine. And it's already on there. It's true. Now it's banded up. It is banded up. Why yeah. would anyone want to take that off? Ready to rock. Uh, last thing it's going to get probably, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to put a magnifier on it yet, which is why it doesn't have iron sights. Everybody's like, oh, you got to have iron sights, but it's fucking aim point. I mean, aim point, you can throw this, I literally have never had a single one of these fail. And I've had a lot of red dots fail. A lot. And aim point T2s, they don't fail. And I think they have like a fucking five year battery life. I change it every year, you're supposed to change it every year, but... Uh, if you do that, you're going to be fine. Regardless, I'll probably still put a front sight on it just in case because I, you know, two is one and one is none, that kind of thing. Uh, however, 
if I don't do that, I will probably put a magnifier on it. The only reason why I don't is because I don't know if I see a need for it yet because it's easy to hit targets out to 100 yards with this, but we'll see how it goes. This uh, this gun might change up a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it's going to stay relatively the same. Uh, most of the setup on most of my guns is the same. Geisley charging handle, Geisley trigger, Magpul XL grip, uh, Surefire or Streamlight light. I like one or the other generally, but I also run Olights too. Uh, good for the money, you know. Uh, as far as suppressors go, Mega 9K on 300 or 9 millimeter and then usually whip machine canuter valves on my 5.56s. They're not the best but they are super light and I do own them and suppressors can be hard to come by. Uh, I set up my sling a couple different ways. Uh, lately I've been trying it a little further out but on this guy it seemed like it just got in the way because the rail system was too short and my big old gangly arms were too long. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty good for me but uh, Overall, it's good for me. It might not be good for you, but it might be a good base for you to set up your gun. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help our local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.